A warm greeting, today is Sunday, June 18, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it is 3.45 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring the evolution of Invest 92, which is close to becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm bread. Additionally, over the next few days, we will also be monitoring a strong tropical wave that originated from Africa, and some models indicate that it may have some chances of cyclonic development as it moves northwestward. So, definitely, a satellite animation that we are not accustomed to seeing in the month of June during hurricane seasons, as this area typically is not favorable for cyclonic development in June. However, as you can see in the yellow colors, although we do have the presence of Saharan dust at the moment, it remains at below normal levels, so it has little effect in limiting the cyclonic development of these tropical waves. Furthermore, remember that the tropical Atlantic has temperatures that are well above normal, thanks to significant warming that has occurred over the last month and a half, and these warm waters are also aiding the development of these two tropical waves. Lastly, the most important factor is that we are currently in a phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is being amplified by a Kelvin wave that is currently moving through the tropical Atlantic region. The Madden-Julian Oscillation, along with the Kelvin wave, will create favorable conditions for cyclonic development for at least the next 72 to 96 hours. Due to these reasons and considering the evolution that the disturbance has had, the National Hurricane Center has increased the probability of cyclonic development for Invest 92 to 90% over the next 7 days as it moves toward the Caribbean. I must also mention that there is a 90% chance of development over the next 48 hours. Therefore, we are highly confident that we will soon have Tropical Depression number 3, and there is even a possibility that the National Hurricane Center may automatically name it as Tropical Storm Brett. This is because Invest 92 is already generating some tropical storm force winds. However, remember that for it to be classified as a tropical cyclone, it needs to have a well-defined and closed circulation at lower levels of the atmosphere, and at the moment, we still do not have evidence of that. This is evident in the visible satellite image, where although we see a much more organized structure compared to yesterday, a well-defined circulation has not yet been identified, and the circulation remains elongated at this time. In the latest satellite images, we also observe the development of some strong thunderstorms to the northwest of the circulation. It's only a matter of hours before this becomes a tropical depression. Another very important factor we are observing is that yesterday I mentioned how crucial it would be to see how quickly a tropical depression developed, as this would have long-term consequences on the disturbance's trajectory. A system that develops more quickly will likely have higher opportunities to move more towards the northwest and away from the Caribbean. However, the longer it takes to become a tropical depression or tropical storm, the further west it could travel and reach the Caribbean. In this video, we will once again evaluate the two scenarios we currently have. The first scenario is based on the GFS model, which strengthens the future tropical storm Brett quite rapidly into a hurricane with a movement away from the Caribbean. The second scenario, based on the European model, maintains this disturbance slower in its organization and reaching the Caribbean by the end of this week. Also, note that the second tropical wave currently looks very healthy in terms of thunderstorm development, and although it hasn't been designated by the National Hurricane Center, it is highly likely they will do so. The future development of this tropical wave will also depend on the strength of tropical storm Brett since a stronger disturbance would create wind shear that would limit the development of this second tropical wave. However, if for some reason Invest 92 remains very weak, it would leave an opportunity for development for the second tropical wave as well. Nevertheless, from now on, we will be focusing entirely on Invest 92. Let's take a look at the latest forecast tracks from different models, and there have been some changes. We have seen a trend among the models to have a westward trajectory, taking this disturbance westward or northwestward between Thursday and Saturday of this week. However, we also have some models that agree with the GFS model, showing a slightly more north-northwestward trajectory, taking it away from the Caribbean. The uncertainty continues, especially after Thursday when this future cyclone reaches 50 degrees west longitude. You can see that between today, Sunday, and next Thursday, there is a lot of consensus on its future trajectory. However, afterwards, we have the two scenarios I mentioned a few minutes ago, which we have been discussing for several days. One scenario is shown by the European models, and the other is shown by the GFS model. The big question is which of the two scenarios is more likely, and later I will give you my opinion on which of the two models is handling the Invest 92 forecast better. In terms of intensity, you can also see that there is a discrepancy directly associated with the future trajectory. Some models develop a strong tropical storm or hurricane for Wednesday or Thursday. Very importantly, 
by the end of the week, they begin to weaken this disturbance, so this is another factor I will be discussing because it is expected that wind shear will start to affect the future tropical storm Brett between Thursday and Friday. These intensity models correspond to the forecasts that resemble the GFS model, with a trajectory passing far northeast of the Caribbean without posing threats to the Lesser Antilles. However, the European models keep it weaker and maintain a more westward trajectory, reaching the Caribbean region. The good news, though, is that those models show a moderate tropical storm or tropical storm strength as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. This is precisely the forecast that favors the European model, which we will also be discussing in the next few minutes. The final trajectory of the future tropical storm Brett will depend on how strong it manages to become by reaching 50 degrees west longitude. Remember, the waters in this area remain very warm, and the heat content is high. So, this is a factor that favors strengthening before approaching the Caribbean, as we saw in yesterday's graph, where sea surface temperatures will remain very warm along its path. However, an important factor that we didn't have yesterday is that specialized models show an increase in wind shear that could impact this disturbance starting from Thursday. Similarly, another limiting factor for significant strengthening is that intensity models now indicate that relative humidity may be slightly lower than anticipated, which could further restrict strengthening along with the wind shear. In fact, compare the relative humidity percentages forecasted from Tuesday with what we had yesterday. There's a significant difference that should also have some impact on intensity forecasts. That's why today we see some trends showing a weaker system and therefore a more westward trajectory. Also, remember that when it approaches the eastern Caribbean region, it will be affected by wind shear, as we can see in the European model forecast for Thursday, where wind shear is expected to start affecting the eastern Caribbean region. So, if the future tropical storm Brett takes that more westward trajectory, it could be impacted by wind shear, which could weaken or even dissipate the cyclone. However, if it maintains a slightly more northwestward trajectory, as shown in the GFS model forecast, conditions may be more favorable with less wind shear, which could help it become a hurricane as it gains latitude and moves away from the Caribbean region. Unfortunately, we once again see a significant discrepancy between the two top models, especially in how strong this system could become when it reaches 50 degrees west longitude. Let's directly examine the forecast from each model. Here we have the GFS model, which has a tropical wave. However, remember that in yesterday's video, I mentioned that we would be watching because in yesterday's runs, the GFS model already developed a tropical depression by this afternoon. However, Invest 92 has not yet become a tropical cyclone. So, an important factor that I mentioned we would be observing is how well the GFS model would forecast the Genesis cycle. When we compare it to the latest runs, we can see that the GFS model has had to adjust to a weaker system. This gives us an indication that perhaps the European model has been providing a better forecast for System 92 at least in the past 24 hours. Let's continue with the most recent forecast from the GFS model. Notice that it maintains a general west-northwest trajectory at least until next Wednesday, but it remains consistent in strengthening the future tropical storm into a hurricane and taking a turn more toward the northwest and north, passing at a significant distance from the Caribbean region. This strong system also exerts wind shear on the next tropical wave, preventing its development. So, at least the model has been very consistent with this forecast. However, we also have another model, the European model, which has also been consistent in its forecast of keeping Invest 92 slightly weaker but with a more westward trajectory. Notice that the European model strengthens Invest 92 into a moderate tropical storm and remains consistent in predicting that it would reach the Caribbean region very weakened as a weak tropical storm by Thursday afternoon or evening. Also, observe that a weaker system could leave opportunities for the second wave, and the European model shows a low pressure associated with that second tropical wave, which may have possibilities for cyclonic development. If this forecast comes true, note that once this disturbance moves over the Caribbean, it will encounter strong wind shear from the northwest and move through the Hurricane Cemetery region, which, at this time, hinders the strengthening of these disturbances. Therefore, the European model completely dissipates in Vest 92 by Saturday. When we compare it with the GFS model, there is a significant difference. The GFS model has a hurricane moving into the waters of the North Atlantic, while the European model simply has a tropical wave crossing the Caribbean. Which of the two models will be correct? I will give you my opinion later on. Lastly, let's briefly look at other models that are very reliable. Here we have the United Kingdom model, which has a tropical depression moving just south of Puerto Rico on Friday night or Saturday morning, aligning well with the European model's idea. The German model also agrees with this forecast, showing a tropical depression passing very close just south of Puerto Rico, but a much weaker system compared to what the GFS model indicates. 
In general, we can see that the American models show a faster strengthening with a northward trajectory, while the European models have a more westward trajectory with a considerably weakened system when it reaches the Caribbean. This can be clearly seen in the ensemble members of the GFS model. Approximately half of the members, shown in yellow and orange, depict the development of a strong tropical storm or hurricane taking a path far from the Caribbean. However, the other half of the members show a weak tropical storm moving into the Caribbean waters. Similarly, we can observe this uncertainty in the European model's ensemble members. Although in this case, the majority support a more westward movement with a weaker system as a tropical storm reaching the Caribbean waters. But we also have some members that align with the GFS model's idea that, if it develops into a hurricane, it will likely take a turn more toward the north. Therefore, to give my opinion and have a general idea of what might be happening, typically when we have such a wide discrepancy between the GFS model and the European model, the logical approach would be to forecast something in between these two models. Although there is a lot of uncertainty, especially from Wednesday onward, and we have to wait and see how long it takes to strengthen into a tropical depression or tropical storm, at the moment, personally, I lean towards the possibility that this system may remain weaker than what the GFS model predicts but stronger than what the European model forecasts. It would move towards the northeast region of the Caribbean and then be impacted by wind shear, rapidly weakening as it moves through this region. Remember, this is just my opinion based on my experience and knowledge. We are closely watching to see what the first forecast from the National Hurricane Center will be once Invest 92 becomes a tropical depression. Well, that would be all for today's afternoon update. Remember, to stay informed, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're interested, go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. I'll see you tomorrow when I update you on the status of Invest 92, and stay tuned to stay informed.